Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a video today on uh, fish eyes and different contaminants. Uh, one of my subscribers uh, mentioned he was interested in if I could make him a video on, uh, you know, different fish eye problems and different contaminants, you know, that you could deal with in, uh, you know, in the body shop and even at home, guys. This is gonna be one for you guys at home and also, obviously, you guys in the, in the business know about fish eyes, but maybe there's something you guys could uh, learn too from this, but just my thoughts on it and uh, different things that you can have and use and do to try to stop that, you know. It's, it's an ongoing problem in the painting business, you know, you'll get a fish eye here and there, but usually if you got the right stuff, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll negate a lot of that by having the right, you know, precautions and having the right uh, uh, different filters and different techniques to stop all that stuff. So I'm going to go over a couple of things. And thanks to you, Husky, uh, for the uh, suggestion on the video. So we're going to go over a couple of things and uh, show you what I think are some of the causes that I know are some of the causes, but some of the things you can do to stop it. So, you know, one thing that a lot of guys don't understand is they think it's a contaminant that's put on there, you know, from, you know, maybe working on the car or something that's on the paint. But a lot of times your airlines are dirty and you're actually putting it fish eyes on the panel through your airlines because your compressor doesn't have the right setup. So you got to have the right filters on your um, compressor and that's one of the main things and also having a dryer. So I'm going to show you guys different ways so if you don't have an actual dryer and you don't have a filter there's some of the things you can do to try to help that out. So I'm going to take you over to the compressor and show you that show you the dryer and some of the filters I have and different cleaning stuff I do and different things like that. So stay tuned guys and let's check this one out together. So here's our compressor we have and this is a screw type compressor and these compressors have a dryer built into them to actually refrigerate the air coming out of the compressor because the air coming out of a compressor is hot. So when that hot air you have to cool it off in order to make it not have moisture in the lines and these high-end compressors uh, you know, have these already built into them. So when you guys, you guys see that? That's actually an automatic purge for the uh, water to release out of the tank. So we have an automatic release, and uh, if you guys don't have an automatic release, you'll go ahead and turn the screw off on the bottom of your tank and drain that every day. Uh, you know, before you start painting, after you're sanding something down, if you have a small compressor because it gets hot. So that's cool that that went. It scared me though. But so we got an automatic release, and it'll spit out every so often. There's a timer on it of how often you want that thing to go off, so that way it drains the tank on you. So sometimes you guys got to think it's not just what's on the panel; it's what you're putting through your airlines that's causing some of your fisheye problems. When you have a small compressor. It's really working hard to try to keep up so it's running real hot and you're causing a lot of moisture. So you got to, you know, a, a key to me is what I used to do is, let me step away here for a minute. So this is the compressor because it's getting loud, but I just wanted to show you that. So that's the first step against starting off with your compressor. You're going to want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, a filter or if you guys are at home, you know, make sure you put some filters or run a, a uh, run a hose and rail it up so it has a long time before it actually gets to you where you could have a little drain and try to drain some of that water off. But it's hard to it's hard to get rid of it. But one recommendation I have for anybody at home is and a good buddy of mine taught me this a long time ago. He said, you know, don't if you're going to paint something, let that compressor cool way off. Almost try to set it up and then come back the next day so that compressor's cool. Don't run it real hard and get it real hot and then start painting like after you've been sanding all day. You know, let it cool off and start fresh. Drain the tank out in the morning and then come back and spray your stuff the next day or let it cool for a long time. And that's a good technique that he taught me a long time ago that really works. So, you know, it's more to it than just a dirty panel. You know, that's definitely part of it, but that's uh, a big concern to that fisheye problem is your compressor sometimes. So I'll show you here in a minute. We're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you some more stuff, so stay tuned. All right, I had to get out of that thing. It was too noisy over there. But, um, so the first thing you wanna do is be concerned with your compressor. If it's a small one and you're running it too hot, you're causing it to make a lot of moisture. 
which is going to make a lot of water in your airlines, you know, and which is going to contaminate your lines and which when you're painting, you're going to have moisture trapped under that paint or oil. The oils are going to cause you to have, you know, fish eyes and the water is going to actually be trapped under that paint. So where once that car comes out of the paint booth, you know, you'll start to see little bubbles in it. Years ago, I did a candy paint job and my lines weren't perfectly clean and I ended up trapping some uh, moisture under my lines, under the paint, I mean. And the only time that you would see that the moisture come out is when it was rainy out or it was humid outside. You'd start to see the bubbles start to come up and then when it, would, when it was sunny out, they would settle down because that moisture was getting activated by the moisture in the air. So there's a lot to it. And um, you know, there's just different ways to combat it, but you gotta have the right stuff in order to really get a, a high-end job. Otherwise, you're gonna be fighting through most of the jobs. And believe me, when I used to start out, when I was young and I was doing a lot of stuff at night, I was fighting through everything. So I picked up one of those refrigerant dryers and uh, it made a world of difference. So you gotta have something out there by the compressor the dryer and have a release your you know water out of your lines that's the first step to, to not having it start at the actual compressor so that way you're not putting it on the panel because if you're blowing the car off after you've cleaned it even you could be blowing oil and water back onto the car light 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 amounts of oil that's going to cause a fish eye so the minute you go to paint and now you have a dirty panel even though you've cleaned that panel off with different prep saws and different cleaners as soon as you go to blow on that car, you're putting the oil right back on the panel. So this is what I mean with your lines have to be really clean. And obviously the second thing you guys are gonna wanna do is make sure you clean the panel off really good with Prepsol, you guys all know that. But this is after you have clean lines and then you have actually the right cleaner because now you have uh, you know, clean lines, you don't have to worry about anything putting back on the actual pan uh, panel coming through the line. So you have your clean, you know, this is a solvent-based and this is our water-based cleaner while I use. So that's just one defense out there with the dryer and the refrigerant. But they make little stuff you guys can use at home if you want to put little uh, water separators on the end of your guns and uh, stuff like that. But one of the biggest things is drain the tank and make sure that you don't get that compressor real, real hot before you start spraying the job. Try to let that thing cool way down and uh, put a little ball on the end of your gun but it, there's no, even me, every now and then I'll get some fish eyes in here because it's just, the, it's just the way the business is. So let's go in the booth and I'm gonna show you something else that you guys, another line of defense that's actually for when you actually have the lines going into the booth. So not only do we have the, the dryer system outside, but this is on the booth and it's the Bilbis. It's a three-stage system. It takes out the actual water, the oil, and then it takes out the desiccant, which takes out the remaining moisture of the uh, stuff that's in the lines. And that's got little desiccant beads in it that actually take the last little bit of moisture that you, in the, in the water, in the lines out. So, you know, these are all the things you gotta have if you really wanna be a production and actually get, you know, as much, you know, alleviate some of the fish eyes. But like I said, you get them now and then, and, uh, you just got to get through them, you know what I mean? But you got to have the main things to paint if you want to have a quality job come out. So here's another step. Like I said, the Devilbus makes. You guys can get smaller ones and cheaper ones. We have this one. And this one's coming from the lines and going back into the booth. That way it's cleaning that out even more. So I was telling you guys about, you know, different things I deal with sometimes. You know, sometimes you can actually get a problem with your air hose. You know, we bake these cars at 140, you know, 150 degrees to, to get the paint to dry. So sometimes this hose will deteriorate over time. Mine's pretty old now. This has got a little overspray on it. But this thing will deteriorate over time and actually break loose and spit little rubber through the line and that'll actually cause you some fish eye problems and different contaminant problems because of that hose being rubber. So there's all kinds of problems that you can deal with and uh, I deal with them, you know, and I've been doing it, like I said, a long time and I'm in a, this is professional atmosphere. But you gotta, you gotta clean the panel. You know, you're either having fish eyes because the panel's dirty 
or you're having fish eyes because your airlines are dirty, guys. So I appreciate, you know, Husky giving me a recommendation to do this video. It was a good idea because I'm sure I was fighting it for a long time when I was doing projects at home until I actually got that refrigerant dryer because that refrigerant dryer is like an air condition for the compressor. It, it cools that air down to where it won't have any moisture in it. So they make cheaper, uh, you know, dryer systems. I bought one years ago for the house from uh, Harbor Freight. They actually have one you can buy online. You can't buy it at the store, but you can order it online. And I had that one now for a long time and it worked really well. So pick up one of them. And if you don't have the money for that, get some other filters in line and uh, make sure you drain them out. And also, one of the things you could do is, you know, when you're running your pipes, run your pipes up, come down and have a little trap on them. You could put them going up and down and have a couple traps on your filters. That way, it'll settle to the lowest point, the water, for you guys at home that are trying to paint stuff. So, thanks for the, uh, watching the video. I hope you guys like it, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Till next time, we'll see you.